This, this is, is Saurabh, and, and you're listening, listening to my favorite, favorite talk show, show the, the, the Weekly show, show with Aditya. Aditya. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. Evil that men do lives after them. The God is oft interred with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus had told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it, Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, For Brutus is an honourable man, So are they all, all honourable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral, He was my friend, faithful and just to me, But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honourable man. He had brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious, when that the poor have cried Caesar had wept? Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was Ambitious and Brutus is an honourable man. All did see that on the looper Cal, I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure he is an honourable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke. But here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? O oh, judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts. Men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. The semi-finals of the Domestic World Cup are finally decided. Mumbai, Delhi, Hyderabad and Bangalore. And this is very similar to the semi-finalist lineup of the 50 over World Cup last year. How? Because you have two teams who have won the competition before in Mumbai and Hyderabad, which was similar to Australia and India. And then you have two teams in Delhi and Bangalore who have never won the competition before. Though Bangalore has made it to the semi-finals of the tournament thrice in 2009, 2011 and 2016. As last year, everyone saw England as the potential favourites. Will we see two new teams in the final which means at this point Delhi and Bangalore in the finals of this domestic tournament like we saw New Zealand and England in the domestic tournament. Remember Delhi have never made it to the finals of this competition. Their attitude has been seen very similar to the attitude of the England team who transformed so, will we see Delhi versus Bangalore in the finals? Well, that's a long way to go. For now, we have the two semi finals, or what is called the qualifiers, the eliminators, and the qualifiers. Mumbai do win, then they will be five time champions. But Rohit Sharma will be a six time domestic champion as a solo player because he won playing for Deccan Chargers, now known as Hyderabad, 11 years ago. And that team, just like Warner is the captain of Hyderabad, the team of Deccan Chargers was also led by an Australian. Rigid individuals may not see 
Hyderabad as former Deccan Chargers. But if you look at it, at this point, Mumbai are five-time champions and Hyderabad are two-time champions. Mumbai are four-time champions waiting to be five-time champions. This talk about the men's T20 domestic competition, we have forgotten about the women's T20 domestic competition which to which Australian version which at least goes on for a month and every player and every team gets two chances to make themselves available for the semi-finals and the finals. Here the women's T20 domestic competition looks like an oversight as of it's being done to placate a few individuals that yes we have women's domestic competition but Till now, it is on trial basis and I disagree with the attitude of the organizers and the Indian Cricket Board. They have been saying for years, we will have a proper women's domestic World Cup or women's IPL or WIPL, which is similar to the WBBL, which is going on right now, parallelly. Matches in a space of four days, who are the organizers trying to placate? I am disappointed with the schedule. In fact, even if you had to have only these teams with names as Velocity or Supernovas or Trailblazers, you would have at least had a month's competition, which means that the tournaments should have been run parallelly right from day one. I said this competition is more of an obligation and to placate a few sympathizers that yes there is a women's competition that yes the women's teams and the players are in focus but they won't get that much of importance as their male counterparts do. The competition will be over even put you blink and I and the bizarre rules of how the women's match is held with the boundaries coming in so close that it's almost an insult that there is a gap of at least 10 to 12 meters between the boundary rope and the advertising boards. I don't understand the logic. Why women's matches have such a huge gap? Why are the boundaries shorter? Especially when a lot of pseudo experts have called for increasing the length of the boundaries. Matches in a space of four days, who are these people trying to deceive? In fact, for all the individuals involved in this, all the stakeholders, all the major stakeholders, for them, it will be a much needed break because this competition has been going on for 40 days without a break. The focus will be on the semi-final tomorrow between Mumbai and Delhi. The four women's matches, the boundaries will be brought inside. In fact, there will be a gap of one kilometer between the boundary group and the advertising hoardings. Such a huge gap. We use the word equality. No other sport is unequal in terms of looking at how the sport is played. For me, the size of the boundary ropes should be same for both the men and the women. Water boundary ropes stem from the thought process that the women players won't be able to run all the way from their designated positions till the boundary. So let's bring the boundary close. And in other words, it means that an unfair advantage over their male counterpart in terms of balls reaching the boundary quicker than the effort required by their male counterparts to do it. And of course, speed at which a women fast baller bowls is equal to a speed at which a male spinner bowls. Imagine 120 kilometers per hour being the fastest a woman speedster can bowl. I don't agree with such a difference but it has been accepted by so many individuals that nobody bothers now. It's almost an expected thing that when the women's matches happen the boundaries will be shorter, the conversation will be different and it will be an obligation to host this competition so that yes 
the women's side of sports person in this sport are happy that yes they participated in a live match in another country in front of millions of people watching well will millions of people watch that's a question that will be answered very soon coming back to the four teams who have made it to the semi finals just by the barest of margins if you look at the points table and the points scored by other teams it's a matter of things like run rate and what not a win in the domestic competition influence as to how we look upon this particular player at the international level well that we will know very soon of the four teams have a higher chance of making it to of the domestic competition we shall know that by tomorrow evening design and default the focus will be on mumbai and hyderabad because they are former champions while looking at delhi and bangalore who have the team but not the experience in the finals though bangalore has made it to the finals before if you look it at that way perspective of who wins this competition the most important thing will be that this competition will be done and dusted by 11th of november 2020 Photo experts and ordinary folks alike have postulated theories that lives have been reset by this virus or by this illusionary and fictional virus in terms of our lifestyle change. Terms like essential and non-essential expenditure has become a part of the daily conversation. there is an effort to make sure that for everybody essential and non essential means luxury versus what is essential which means that traveling is a luxury and we should not travel much because of the fact that is a major source of the virus spreading from one individual to another and also travel has been linked with the idea of climate change so yes individuals should travel less as far as traveling is concerned whether it's by road or by air the idea of essential and non essential is relative because for some individuals traveling is important as far as that specific is concerned and whether an individual want to travel for essential or non essential reasons it should be left to that individual and not become a conversation that don't travel whether an individual want to travel whether they want to buy something should be left to the discretion of that particular person i want to travel go to the shopping centers and buy something i will do that i won't be influenced by the discussions on what is essential and what is unessential wine rhetoric of how the pre pandemic environment had influenced us to spend exorbitantly and now because of this virus and things which have changed dramatically like the climax of a movie we are buying only essential stuff well i disagree with this hypothesis also means that i won't be influenced by this festival shopping scam that comes up every year that between the festivals a few very cleverly sell their outdated and substandard products giving discounts i won't be influenced by such thing if i want to buy a product it will be of a good and not the substandard quality which is sold during this great festival period where brands want to sell off their substandard products which are rotten in their warehouses great festival period doesn't influence me at all this is human nature we want to buy products at 
economical rates even if it means that the quality of the product is not good or substandard so this theory of this particular virus or pandemic or whatever the terminology is has it reset the way we look at buying products or way we have reset our lives well that is relative and subjective P.G. Woodhouse, Chapter 16 I think his exuberance would have led him to continue in the same strain indefinitely. But at this point, Stiffy came out of the thoughtful silence into which she had fallen. She had been standing there regarding him with a speculative eye, as if debating within herself whether or not to start something and now she gave the impression that her mind was made up i'm glad to see you so cheerful uncle watkin i was afraid my news might have upset you upset me said pop basse credulously whatever put that idea in your head well you are short one son-in-law it is precisely that that has made this the happiest day of my life. Then you can make it the happiest of mine, said Stiffy, striking while the iron was etched by giving Harold that vicarage. Most of my attention, as you well may imagine, being concentrated on contemplating the soup in which I was immersed, I cannot say whether or not Pop Basse hesitated, but if he did, it was only for an instant. No doubt for a second or two, the vision of that hard-boiled egg rose before him and he was conscious again of the resentment he had been feeling at Stinker's failure to keep a firm hand on the junior's member of his flock. But the thought that Augustus Fink Nottle was not to be his son-in-law, drove the young cleric's shortcomings from his mind. Filled with the milk of human kindness, so nearly to the brim that you could almost hear it sloshing about inside him, he was in no shape to deny anyone anything. I really believe that if at this point in the proceedings tried to touch him for a fiver, he would have parted without a cry. Of course, of course, of course, of course, he said, caroling like one of Jeeves' larks on the wing. I'm sure that Pinker will make an excellent vicar. The best, said Stiffy, he's wasted on a curate. No scope running under wraps. Unleash him as a vicar and he'll be the talk of the established church. He's as hot as a pistol. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day. To the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools. The way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow, a poor player. That struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Homer, the Iliad, book 2. Then, when those terrible, monstrous omens burst in on the victims we were offering to the gods, Calacus swiftly revealed the will of Zeus. Why struck dumb now my long head Achaeans? Zeus, who rules the world, has shown us an 
awesome sign an event long in the future late to come to birth but the fame of that great work will never die as the snake devoured the sparrow with her brood and the mother made the ninth born them all so we will fight in troy that many years and then then in the tenth we will take her broad streets so that day the prophet revealed the future and now look by god it all comes to pass up with you all you argives guide for combat stand your ground right here until we take the mighty walls of priam fire them so the armies roared and the ships resounded round them shattering echoes ringing from their shouts as argives cried assent to king odysseus words and nestor the noble horseman spurred them more what disgrace look at you carrying on in the armies muster just like boys fools not a thought in your head for works of battle what becomes of them now the packs and the oaths we swore into the flames with counsels all the plans of men the vows sealed with a strong unmixed wine the firm clasp of the right hand we trusted we battle on in words as always mere words and what's the cure we cannot find a thing no matter how many years we wrangle here i'm known never swerve hold on to your first plan of action lead your armies headlong into war the rest of them lead them not the one or two who hatch their plans apart from all the troops what good can they win from that nothing at all why they would scuttle home before they can even learn if the vows of zeus with his dark cloudy shield are false or not zeus the son of almighty cronus i remind you board his head that day we boarded ship all the argives laden with blood and death for troy lightning bolts on the right good omens blazing forth so now let no man hurry to sail for home not yet not till he beds down with a faithful trojan wife payment in full for the groans and shocks of war we all have home for helen any soldier wild with desire to reach his home at once just let him lay a hand on his black benched ship and right in front of the west he'll reach his death but you my king be on your guard yourself come listen well to another man here's some advice not to be tossed aside and i will tell it clearly revenge your men by tribes even by clans agamemnon can fight by the side of clan tribe by tribe fight this way if the argives still obey you then you can see which captain is a coward which contingent too and which is loyal brave since they will fight in separate formations of their own then what's more if you fall back to sack the city you will know if the will of gods to blame or the cowardice of your men in that in battle for more awesome content tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with aditya for more awesome content tune in to the next episode of the weekly show with aditya